What's up everybody, Brody here from Brody's Garage. Today is July 23rd, and this is episode 42. The big news here is that after much, much, much <laughs> deliberation, I have an exhaust system on the car now. And uh, I wanna personally thank my friend Chapo, who went above and beyond to take away from his daily schedule to bring my car in and get this knocked out. There's about a thousand components to this exhaust system, all teak welded, so thank you, Chapo. Uh, let's dive in for a closer look. It's pretty cool because this is the first time I've actually been able to stand underneath the car and kind of check things out. I caught a few things, a couple things that weren't tight. Also, this, um, torque arm was not sitting level that's because I apparently had adjusted the two pinion arms slightly differently so it was sitting a little cockeyed so I leveled that out adjusted my pinion angle a bit and uh, yeah it's pretty cool I also flipped my transmission cross member back the opposite direction in a previous episode I mentioned that I had to flip it the opposite way because I couldn't get these two bolts to line up uh, and as a result, this was hanging out over the edge here and I was thinking about, well, am I gonna extend this bracket? And anyway, today I just uh, put a jack underneath this, flipped it around and uh, it's working out. I am gonna cut off this excess here. I don't need these extra holes here. And uh, that should give me some more room for a crossover balance tube here. Okay, well, we got the mufflers on, we fired it up and right away, <laughs> the mechanical noise that I heard when I first started it is very blatantly obvious and we think that it's coming from somewhere underneath the flywheel cover or near the starter it could be the flex plate is rubbing or hitting the teeth of the starter don't know but tomorrow's a new day I'll pull the cover off and take a look I don't think it's engine related I think there might be an exhaust leak and the mechanical noise but uh, one thing at a time but we got the mufflers on and uh, the tone is good it's going to be not a quiet car, but, you know, we'll get the tailpipes on it and it'll, uh, it'll hopefully be streetable. All right, good morning. It is a new day. It is July 20th. I'm back at 6651 Customs to hopefully finish or at least continue on the exhaust install today. As you can see, this is where we left off last night. We got to, all the way to the mufflers and we're going to clean up those hangers there a bit. While I was back here, I leveled out my uh, torque arm it's actually still a teeny teeny bit off but while I was under the car I did some adjusting to the pinion angles and if you don't get those two rods adjusted evenly the torque arm kind of sits a little cockeyed which I think it's still maybe I don't know 0.2 degrees off but the big news for today is this we got the car started up last night I got to hear it through the mufflers for the first time obviously it quieted it down considerably, and I was able to hear things that I wasn't able to hear when I first drove it around the block the other day. So, the big noise coming from somewhere in the engine bay was narrowed down to somewhere in this general area. As I got under the car, it was really, really noticeable that the noise was down here. I left it for this morning to come and uh, troubleshoot, and the first thing I did was pull off this aluminum cover, and boom. There is my problem. As you can see right there, the flex plate was grinding itself through this aluminum here. So I can't tell you how happy this makes me to find this because I was dreading it might have been something internal in the engine, but this is an easy fix. I will grind or cut that piece off. Um, fortunately, there's not much noticeable wear on the flex plate at all. You know, that uh, SFI approved flex plate is pretty tough and the aluminum is pretty soft so there you go I'm gonna now fire up the car and listen to it without the cover and see what it sounds like all right well I have uh, removed the flywheel cover or flex plate cover and I'm curious to hear what the thing sounds like without a gigantic grinding noise let's check it out
After much debate, I decided to go ahead and notch out the bumpers so that I can recess my uh, tailpipes up in there like this, or my exhaust tips like that. Or so I'm doing this backwards. Anyway, something like that right there. They can't go up too far because we've got the, you know, frame rail and bolts and all that to contend with, but it will go up about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. And I don't know, I just think that would look trick to have it kind of sitting up into the bumper a little bit, so. Here we go. Well, no turning back now. I don't know, I think it's gonna look better. Well, as I kind of suspected, I, I did a pretty nice job on the cut, but as soon as I went to kind of deeper the edge, the chrome plating just started flaking off. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to have the bumpers replated. It's really a good thing though, because I think I'm gonna take a little more time and finish this edge off properly. Maybe try to weld something, a lip around it to kind of look, make it look like it's rolled under, you know, rather than just sort of cut off flush. So not a huge loss. I kind of anticipated this. I don't know where I'm gonna get it chrome plated. I've heard that it's hard to find places that'll do chrome plating, but um, I'll find a place. Anyway, the, uh, the area is notched out. Um, for the time being, I think we're gonna proceed and get the exhaust done with it like this and i'll come back to the bumper at another time when i tear it all apart i'll finish it off properly and it'll look awesome so while i had these off i, I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, clean out my pipes get it pipes this is a three inch inlet and a two by eight inch rectangular outlet and there was a metal flange where this uh the inlet necked way down there so you can see where i've ground it out to sort of match the opening of the pipe inside but it was probably a quarter of an inch of material all the way around especially in the corners that i had to remove so uh hopefully it'll breathe a little bit better that's worth 0.2 horsepower right there first exhaust tip choppa what do you think man Okay, it's Friday, it's day four of my exhaust installation, even though we're not putting in full eight hour days here. Um, I'm back for a fourth day. Today is all about the crossover tube or balance tube that goes between there and there. You can see we've already cut out the holes for the exhaust to pass through. It doesn't make much sense to put a balance tube and not cut the holes out, although I've heard stories about that. Uh, we fabricated the balance tube and there it is with a couple of 45 degree bends and some v-band clamps by the way that's my t-bolt right there i did that one right there and chapo did this one over here no i got that backwards chapo did the prettier one i did the uglier one but it is my t-weld right there so we're about to uh, put this up in place and tack it in and get this thing welded up here we go All right, ladies and gents, there's the first look at the finished product. Tailpipes, three inch polished stainless, up over the axle, to the mufflers, MagnaFlow three inch straight through, three inch stainless, a two and a quarter inch balance tube, custom flat oval, I guess they're three and a half inch wide pieces for clearance here that go up and through the firewall and then over and we'll get a shot from the top. But before we do that, one last look before I fire it up for the first time, I just smacked my head into the lift, nice. So here's where we are today. Um, today, this morning, after getting the car home and unloading it from the trailer late last night, 
I uh, woke up to give it a, a thorough examination and I found that there were actually a few exhaust leaks up here. Now keep in mind with a turbo system like this, we've got V-bands galore and on my car, if you look down there, those stainless steel headers have one, two, three couplers that are all different radiuses that allow me to achieve this placement of the turbo. Now, of course, you could have just built, you know, a mandrel bent piece, but I didn't know at the time where this was gonna end up. So I said, send me all the components. I'll just sort of sort it out. And that's what I ended up, I ended up using all of them. So every one of those has a V-band and a clamp and a potential place for a leak. Well, as you can imagine, I had a couple. And today I had to loosen everything back up, pry, shimmy, re-angle, finagle, until I got things to line up and it's bolted back up and I just took it for a drive actually around the neighborhood and um, I gotta say the car is coming together it's sounding better it's running better um, I get a little bit more confident with the car and its mechanical stability um, I actually tapped the throttle and heard the turbo start to whine um, I didn't get above boost yet or anything there but just the sound of the air going through those is so incredible and you could feel the throttle response kicking in and I didn't even give it hardly any throttle. So I'm fairly confident this is gonna be a serious machine when it's all done. So this is the top. As you can see, we um, have the down pipes coming out of the turbos, going through a, a flex joint into oval tubing. That has to be notched out further because it's rubbing against the firewall still. But that goes down through oval tubing and then transitions back to three inch round. And I'm going to show you the bottom side here in a minute. But um, these are the wastegate dumps, which these were quite a pain in the ass, i got to be honest with you. The wastegates um, have these merges that come out of the, uh, the 90 degree bend there. They go into the wastegate and then dump up here back into the downpipe. And of course, there's a flex coupler here. Really, this needed another V-band so that we could separate it because putting this giant piece up here together with this connected and having to fit down there was quite a chore. Um, maybe in the future we'll, we'll cut this and install another V-band there. But for right now, I got it bolted up. It's working, it's running, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the progress. Okay, well the day is done and here's the plan for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to forego my initial plan to take the car and immediately strip it all apart, put it on the rotisserie, and do the complete body and paint top to bottom. What I think I'm going to do now instead, because A, it's the middle of summer here in Vegas, it's the hottest part of the year, working on this thing outdoors is brutal. So rather than dive completely into that, what I'm going to do is put the car on the trailer, which belongs to Al anyway. And I'm going to run the car over to his place tomorrow. He's got his own little shop in the backyard. And what we're going to do is do a quick sand and rough on some of the bodywork. And we're going to throw some epoxy primer on the car. Just the exterior, nothing in the inside, nothing in the engine bay, I don't think. We can't really get to much in there. But my plan is to get the car presentable and drivable. And I'm going to get the headlights, turn signals, everything working. We're gonna put the front and rear windshields in. I'm gonna make the thing street legal, then I'm gonna take it down and get it registered because I think I owe it to myself to, I don't know, enjoy the car a little bit right now since it is drivable, uh, rather than wait another two months to really get that enjoyment. Plus, it'll give me a chance to fine tune things, flog the car, get it professionally calibrated in tune. I've got a guy coming over Tuesday and we're gonna see what we can do with it. Um, I've got it to the point where I'm at the limit of my knowledge of Terminator X. Um, I hope to learn a lot more, but that's my plan as of right now. We're going to take the car, get a, a coat of primer on it, get the thing street legal, get it registered, maybe take it to a car show, who knows, but I'm going to drive it. I built this car to be enjoyed, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then after that point, after I feel like, okay, the car is mechanically done, now it's time to take it apart, clean it up top to bottom, seal everything, undercoat it, paint, sound deadener, upholstery, finish up the wiring, all the, the power windows and all the details, chrome trim, and then it's a done deal. So I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with right now. The car is, I drove it around the block again. 
and it started and it ran and it shifted and it did all the things that a car is supposed to do. Um, I just gotta be able to do it without hot air coming through the windshield. Until the next time, take care.